Uh, I'm doing the peace thing now. Is that what that means? Yes. <laughs> yes. Will that make me cool? Well, I, see it. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but close enough. I'll give you that. I thought that was a QAnon symbol now. <laughs> Probably. Everything is somebody's symbol now. And, yeah. every, and everything's offensive. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Literally everything's offensive. It's like, no, don't do a thumbs up. You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> that is actually offensive in other countries. Yeah. Oh. Same with pointing with one finger. <laughs> okay. Excuse you, sir. Oh, Allison says hi, by the way. Allison Tercero? Yeah, more like troublemaker, but yeah. Um, has she started school yet? I think so. Uh, we had like a mini going away thing for her. It was all socially distant, but we did it. Um, this is the portion of the meeting that I'm going to lambast you for um, meeting with someone because you're spreading COVID. Uh, we had masks. We stayed six feet apart. We also had pizza. No, but it doesn't matter because I just want to. I just want to. I just want to vomit the politics all over you. No. Yay. <laughs> it's day one. Let me live. All right. There's plenty of time to destroy you throughout this term. Yay. All right. Challenge accepted. Uh, so let's look real quick at um at our boilerplate um, syllabus. Everybody's on Canvas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so make yeah. sure that your notifications are on because um, I hub everything through there and I do everything basically through announcements, okay? Unless I'm sending an individual message, I'll uh, email you, obviously. <clears throat> or I'll come to your house with a bullhorn. Sometimes I do that. Isn't no, that you can't. COVID? <laughs> yeah, social distance. You can't come to my house. I'm out front. I don't go inside. <laughs> oh that's what the bullhorn's for Jesus get with the program um, okay I'm going to share my screen oops I am sharing my screen you guys can see my screen right yeah, yeah. yeah. yes yep. okay now you can see my screen right oh, yeah yep. okay uh, I'll put the class blog in here uh, I have to add it in um Office hours, my office hours are the same, kind of like how they are when I'm on campus. Um, these are my official ones. If you, if they don't fit, just tell me and we'll work something out, okay? Um, this whole thing right here is boilerplate stuff. Uh, right out of curriculum. It, it's just designed to be broad to describe the class, class on Broadway, which I don't really think is helpful. Um, uh, absent from class the first day, you're out, which doesn't make any sense because if you're not here, you don't know that. Um, missing more than one meeting in the first two weeks, you'll get dropped. Uh, attendance is a factor in your grade. I think all this stuff is common sense, okay? Don't be late all the time. You're five feet from your classroom, so there's no excuse for it anymore, Taylor. What? I was never late. I know. I, just... <laughs> I mean, to online. If I know you, I'm going to attack you a lot more. That's fine. <laughs> uh, three absences is a, uh, or three lates is an absence, okay? Don't be sitting around on your phone. That makes me crazy. Um, don't have your phone over here and you're watching anime while you're supposed to be paying attention. Here's the grading scale. Hang on. So we're going to have a little bit of that because we're putting a toilet in. Okay, but I'll mute the microphone when it happens. So if my mic goes mute and I'll wave or something, that's what I'm doing. This stuff is all on campus stuff for the most part. This academic honesty part really only comes into play um, in this class, because we're gonna use reference and things like that, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> we'll be doing our own thing with it. I mean, that to me is more if you're plagiarizing something. Don't plagiarize anybody's stuff. In this class, 
it's a mixture of mechanics and ideas and things like that. So I want your own ideas and I want your own execution. So the worst thing you can do in any class, in my opinion, uh, is if I give you, I'm going to give you an assignment and then you go, I'm going to go copy this person. And it's like, I don't remember a whole lot, but I remember a whole lot about drawings and paintings and things like that. And I'll know where it came from. Okay. So just your own ideas. So just your own ideas. Okay, you guys. All right. Okay, I have a note here called draftsmanship versus style. Okay. One of the things I really want to push is I'm a big believer in draftsmanship, obviously. Okay. But in once you get past sort of when you're starting to put this stuff into use, there's Gilbert. Um, when you start putting this stuff into use, your draftsmanship has to become in service to design. Okay. Like I have students sometimes and in this class, it really doesn't make any sense where I go, okay, we're doing this character or whatever it is. Uh, and they're drawing sort of like this anatomically perfect thing and spending three weeks on it and it's stiff and it's like this isn't even that's not what this is and we'll go through all that okay all the um, um, I'm going to I'm going to give you like a really simple shape exercise today because I really need stuff to work on because we're only meeting one day a week right am I right yeah um, yep. uh, so for next week, it's, it just helps me. If you've been in any of my classes, it helps me to have work that you guys have put out that I can work over and I can correct and we can talk about it and, and you know, talk about technique and all that kind of stuff. This class will be a mixture of digital and traditional, okay? I'm gonna teach, we're gonna start off with simple shape exercises. That's gonna lead to a simple inking exercise. I don't think inking has probably been taught on campus this way in probably 100 years, okay, probably since the 70s or something. But I think it's really important that is your one of your base skill sets for this type of work is in a, an inking skill set. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yep. once I get to it, um, I'm going to have you do a simple animal with a simple background. Um, I'm finishing up the video for it right now. It's two and a half hours because it goes... Um, from pencil rough to pencil refinement to ink to watercolor to gouache and mixed media or whatever I want to call it. Okay. Now I don't edit them into two parts anymore because I just go, who cares? And you scrub forward. Or when you, one thing I like about YouTube is if you watch X amount of it and then you come back to it, it'll just jump back to where you were. So there's no reason for me to break it up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, yeah. I don't want yeah. to do a half hour tutorial on something. Inking is its own animal, okay? And I don't want to do a half hour tutorial on something that in depth, okay? That doesn't make sense to me. We have to go in depth. If we were in the classroom, we would do that. And I don't want to lose any value for not being in the classroom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what? Hang on. Oh, okay. Um, so this stuff, we'll probably also do, okay, so um, the first inking thing I'm going to show you guys, which we're not going to get to for probably about two weeks, maybe, maybe sooner, I don't know, um, is one type of inking, okay? And then later on, we'll probably talk more about sort of comic book style inking, which is much more blocked together pulling rat tail half tones out of it and things like that. They're, they're actually two different styles of it. And I'll find some really good examples of it because there's people and all they do is ink, okay? And they're monster good at it. It's insane how good they are at it. They don't draw or anything. They just, they're just inkers, okay? But man, some of them are unbelievable, okay? Um, ideas are as important as final execution. I say this in my illustration class also. You need to have ideas, okay? Um, and that to me, that's the fun part. It's the fun part coming up with the ideas and then and then executing them, okay? The hard part to me is the uh, is the ideas. You got to come up with ideas, and the execution is actually kind of easier, okay? I want you to keep a sketchbook in here, okay? Um, and what we're going to start getting into actually today is I'm just going to start talking about very simple shape building in relation to faces and things like that, okay? Very simple. Um, but eventually you can start um, playing. And I'm also going to do some on location things. 
I put together I put together a few different setups in here. So my setup right now is, and my lights just came in today. So I'm probably going to use my uh, live area here in a minute. It will be lit correctly after today. Right now it's just I don't have my lights in. They just came in today. So I'll set that all up and get rid of the shadows and all that stuff. So anyway, I have this this machine. I've got a Cintiq to my right, and then I've got a live area to further over. So we're going to still be doing traditional techniques. Anything that's a big dive, like the ink demo that I just did, I will put on YouTube. So you'll watch that the day before class, and then you can start coming in the next day and going, oh, yeah, I got questions about this, I got questions about this, and I can answer them in real time. Does that make sense? There are no yes. stupid questions in here, okay? Like all this all this stuff, you know, uh, I like – I love all this old school stuff. I love, I don't even consider it old school, but like, you know, ink and dip pens and brushes. And I just love all this stuff. Okay. Paper, crystal paper. Um, but we will be doing both. Okay. So we'll talk about inking and we can talk about inking in relation to digital. And then as we get further down the line, some of the projects you'll do, I'll give you the choice of doing it traditional or digital. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Yeah, makes, makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. You guys can hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. I can hear you. Okay. No questions on the syllabus, right? Be on time. Don't be a flake. Hit your deadlines. And we're good. Right? Taylor? Yep. Yes. That's how big my hands actually are in relation to my face. You know that? <laughs> yeah. um, um, okay. <clears throat> Let's look at this. I just put this up. So under announcements. You don't need this by, the, by next week. You will need it probably in a few weeks. Okay. First one on here is Bristol board. Um, this is fine. You can buy individual sheets of it. Is it backwards or is it forwards in your camera? It's forwards. It's forward. It's forward. It's forward. Hang on. This is smooth. You want smooth. That's good for ink. This is 11, I think it's 11 by 17. Yeah, this is a good size, 11 by 17, okay? This is not the top of the line, but this is fine for this class, okay? Totally fine. And this is, um, I think it's four ply. I think it's four ply. Does anybody know what a four ply means? Made from four sheets. Huh? Okay. For press sheets. Yes, it's four sheets pressed together. Um, does anybody know why it's called Bristol paper? Because you used to take your finest paper to Bristol, England, and that's where you would paste it together. Fun fact. Good fun fact. Huh? Good fun fact. The more you know. I'm big on fun facts. Okay, um, so that's Bristol. It's a really nice, heavy stock paper. Um, okay, this second one, you guys, am I sharing my screen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Hunt 513 EF nib. I love this nib, okay? Um, hang on. What about G nibs? If we have G nibs, are those okay? Uh, is that like the mango ones? Uh, yeah. yeah. If you like them, probably. As long as they're not like ultra fine or anything. No, no. I, I mean, I have curl curl too, but okay, I like the G-nibs. No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull a couple of things out here. Okay. So let's put a couple of these out. Um, all right, so let's switch here. Yeah. 
Okay. You guys can see my board, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let me get rid of this guy. This one I don't really need to talk about. This is the hunt nib. You're going to need a handle. All your different nibs will fit in that, usually. OK, there it goes. Crow quill. This one was 225. These are cheap. Super fine, super fine nib. Okay. This is a triple lot brush. Can you guys see that? Okay, really fine brush. Okay. And then I have a bigger. This, you can use anything you've got, basically. This is just a really nice round. And if you wet it, if you see, it goes back to that needle point at the top. So this can hold a lot of pigment, but then I can go in and do really fine lines with it, okay? I like to have one of these. This is not necessary, okay? But I will show you how to do brush and scale. This is an architectural scale. So it has those three blades on it. And the reason I like that is I can tilt it up on one blade like that, and I can do all my brush and scale stuff, which I'll show you later. Uh, regular ruler, you'll need that. If you get a ruler, you might want to get an inking ruler, which means they're, they're, they're off the surface a little on the edges, which means the ink won't run underneath them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, pencils, I have a little bigger round this is the other stuff that i'm talking about if you have brushes you're probably fine but you are going to need a fine one the gold standard for inking brushes you know the small stuff the finer stuff is a winsor newton series seven okay don't go out and get that right now they're super expensive okay but if you get serious about it that's what you'll need okay um higgins Higgins Indie Ink, this is just your standard Indie Ink. This one's Black Magic. It's super dark and dense. It has to be waterproof. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? We're yeah. going to go to color on this. And uh, India Ink is pretty much bulletproof once it dries, man. It, it just doesn't smear. It doesn't move. It doesn't do anything, which is great. Okay. Oh, I like this, too. This is a rigger brush. And you can see it's got a real long... Uh, uh, whatever you call them, bristles. And look how pointed that gets. So you can get this really nice, really nice tapered lines with that, okay? Now, the trick with this ink stuff, and we'll get into this in a few weeks, <laughs> is the sensitivity and how you're handling the brush and then how you handle, you guys hear me still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they're done with the toilet, so. Um, so let's look at, um, where did I put these? Oh, I, my, my studio is like in disarray right now because I just started this week. Here. This is also optional. These are draft dots. All these basically are, are little dots. You can see them right here. And they're just basically, they're basically um, drafting tape dots. So when I start doing overlays, sorry. When I start doing overlays over a drawing, like I have this drawing, and I want to start keeping this stuff, I can just take a draft dot and pop them on there. Does that make sense? They're just convenient. Uh -huh. you, um, you could use drafting tape or whatever. I just like them. It makes it convenient. Um, let's see. Roll trace, you're going to need this. Okay, this you can see about this is a smaller one. This is probably the width of um, this one is 12, 12 inches. So that's that's fine. Okay, and it's just a roll, it's very translucent. You can see it here. Okay, I love drawing on this paper, it's actually a lot more durable than it feels, but it erases out completely. 
Um, and it just takes pencil and stuff really nice, okay? Um, watercolor, so let's move this. Put all your good tools away from your bad tools. So I have this box that's all my good stuff, okay? So if I'm gonna do anything serious, all of it, I put it, this is where everything is, okay? Then I have all my cheap brushes I use for location painting and stuff like that. Watercolor. Yeah, if you don't have watercolor, you guys just get cheap watercolor. Um, you can get sets for like 20 bucks. Sakura usually has sets for really inexpensive. If you already have some, fine. This is, um, I'll show you a couple. This one. It's just a palette that I got, uh, and I just filled it up with two watercolors, okay? So I filled up the wells with two watercolors, like this, okay? Some of these tubes of paint, by the way, some watercolor lasts a long time because it cakes up like that and you can reactivate it. Um, some of these tubes are probably 20 something years old and they're still going. You might want to put them, your watercolor, Keep them in this, this uh, Tupperware thing, so no air can get in there, so they can't dry up. Sometimes they'll dry up in the tube. Um, I would get a tube of white gouache, okay? If you want to experiment with gouache, I have some gouache here, but if you, normally in the classroom, I'll just let you experiment with my stuff, but we're not in there. You don't have to get gouache, though. Just get one tube of white. <clears throat> so this is one, this palette thing probably costs... I don't know, 10, 12 bucks. And then I just, I had watercolor. So I just filled it up with my watercolor. So I like to use this one on location because it's a little bigger. Um, this is my best one. That's Schmincke. Uh, really good watercolor. This set probably costs somewhere around 200 bucks probably. You probably don't want to do that. This is one. I've had for about 25 years that I love. Does that make sense? That would be yep. fine in this class. You can have a little small one like this. I use this on my travel kit and my uh, everyday um, sketch bag. And again, I just filled it up with paint I liked. Okay, it's got little wings. And the, um, the water bottle is also a palette, okay? And then it's got its little, they've made this same, they still make this exact same kit. You can still get it. <clears throat> the trick is if you want to find it, because this when I bought this one, it was about 60 bucks, and they seem to have stayed about that price. But sometimes if you search them on Amazon and don't buy it, it'll start popping up, and it'll drop down to like 34, okay? This is a pretty nice little set. I like it. It's even got the little thumb thing underneath it. So you can hold it like that. So you can be all artsy, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, brush pins. You might want to, um, this is a good idea, I think. So I had a sketchbook. It got ripped off in uh, San Francisco, probably by um, one of you guys. Hang on. What? Let's see. So what I was keeping the sketchbook for was just to practice, just to do brush stuff. So hang on. All right, where the hell is it? Hang on a sec, you guys. I have a folder for this class and it's not coming up. Oh, I know why. Okay, I forget it. So, Okay, so this is a good thing to do. Get a good brush or like a decent brush pen. 
<clears throat> like the Prisma color brush pins are pretty good because um, you got to get your hands sensitive to doing that. Or the Pentel brush pins are really good. Uh, they're real sensitive though. The, the Pentel brush pins are not waterproof, by the way. So if you are planning on putting any color or anything on it, they're not waterproof. The uh, I think the um, the other ones are the uh, the pr Prisma colors and things like that. Here's the thing with them: buy like three at a time because they're going to fray a lot faster because they're, they're just kind of meant to be disposable, and that's good because they're cheap and you can just go through them. And, and then as they, as they get frayed, you can get different effects with them. Okay, but I kept this sketchbook just for brush stuff. Does that make sense? So you know, stylizing the hair. So. Uh, let's see. Okay, like this kind of thing, the way the hair is handled. Just having fun with it, really. Lettering, like here. Hair again, you know, stylizing. Stylizing. So I just kept this sketchbook just for this. I just bought another one, and uh, I'm doing it again. I have no idea. Somebody, somebody ripped off a bunch of stuff out of my car. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like yes. this. This real simple, this kind of idea. It also helps you design because if you're doing this, you know, how are you going to handle that beard? You can handle it with, you know, nice little design uh, tricks or whatever you want to call it, okay? I have to screenshot this room in a minute too. Do I have any ads in here? Yes, one ad. Wait a minute, can you guys see my screen, my sketchbook screen? Or are you just seeing this one? We can Same. see both. You can switch back and forth. Yeah. But you can see both? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you can see this brown paper sketchbook I'm showing you? Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't know that. That's cool. No, I don't, it doesn't come up on my screen. Hey, Jesse's in here too? Jesse. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go, let's finish this up. Okay, so <clears throat> that one, by the way, I don't have it in here, it's in my car. That one I keep, it's a little, um, it's a sketchbook about, it's a Strathmore one, where is it? Hang on. Oh, here it is. It's a, it's a little smaller than this one, okay? It's a little tone paper sketchbook and I just use it for brush, brush stuff. Keeps my hands sensitive, okay? Because I do so much loose sketching, a brush pin forces me to um, sort of finish things out, okay? Which I like, I like to just work loose, but it's nice to finish things out and get them a little tighter once in a while. Okay. So you can see my list again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, roll trace, watercolor, blah, blah, blah. Sketchbook, keep a sketchbook for this class. You're gonna need one, okay? I don't really care, but don't get one like, Man, everything's in disarray. Oh. Don't get one like this. Don't get a little tiny sketchbook, okay? Taylor? I would never use a tiny sketchbook. How dare you? Okay. Uh, Are we allowed to do loose leaf paper like we did for sketching for animators? Because yeah. I have like a huge dream of the hammer mill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't lose any of it. <clears throat> I never do. Keep it in an envelope or something, okay? Because I've had people do that in the end of the journey. Oh, I lost them and say, oh, well, that's your problem. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, get a, d a decent size one. Um, keep a bunch of them. So, you know, um, the mole skeins are nice. I was just talking about this in my other class. You can paint in these. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff in these. I've been using it for um, a lot of sketchbook paintings lately, mountains. Um, you know, boats. So this is taking acrylic really nicely, right? And the reason I like acrylic is once I, I do something in here, it's bulletproof. It's never going anywhere, okay? Um, these are about 30 bucks. I, I think that's a little pricey probably for this class. Also, don't let your brain get all psychological about it. So if you, you know, if you, sometimes you have an inexpensive sketchbook, you're more likely to not be all precious about it. This one's a clipboard. So the thing I like about this 
is I can keep two different kinds of paper in here. I can keep white paper and um, tone paper, right? And I like to use both. And I'm real picky about my paper. So I'm using hammer mill digital copy paper for the white paper because it's really smooth and it's got a little bit of weight to it. And then this is Desert Storm from Kelly Paper that I've been using for like 25 years. And I love this paper. It's the perfect tone paper. And then this one closes up. I can keep a couple of pencils in here <clears throat> and it goes in my sketch bag, okay? So just get a sketchbook. Don't get any smaller than letter size. <clears throat> digital, anything digital, um, uh, the, obviously the standards are, uh, you know, Photoshop and stuff. If you have another software you like and it can, act, you know, it's a professional software, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter in here to me. Um, you can use what you want because some people like Clip Studio and stuff. I never used it. But if you can paint and everything in it like reasonably, then it's probably fine. Okay. <clears throat> and like I said, a tube of white gouache. <clears throat> also, I would check with people like you know, because a lot of people go through mediums while they're in college. Like they go, oh, I took a so and so's class, and most people hate acrylic. And they go, I hate it. Oh, I hated acrylic. Blah blah blah. And you go, good. Why don't you sell me your acrylic for fifteen bucks? I mean, why not? It's just going to sit there. They're not going to do anything with it. Or if they have a watercolor book or whatever, or watercolor um, watercolors, you know, see if anybody has anyone to get rid of, because they might not like that medium and they just get rid of it, okay? If they're really cool, they just give it to you. Okay, does so all that make sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you probably have some of these already. You might already have some Bristol board. Um, some maybe some nibs. I'm not going to be. You don't have to get the exact. You have to get a crocodile nib for sure. Crocodile pen. Those are three bucks. Who cares? But um, uh, just get a good all around drawing nib, and that's what the 513, the Hunt 513 is. But if you have one and you like it, and it's a good nib, and I'm, that's fine. Okay, your tool tools are personal, so that's fine. Uh, but you could get away in this class probably with paper, and you can buy Bristol board by the sheet. I think. So you could cut it up if it's cheaper, huh? Mike, does it matter like what size of bristle board? Because I have like a hundred different eight, like letter or slightly larger than letter size. Or I wouldn't get it yet. I know this first project we're going to do, you don't need anything bigger than that. Okay. Uh, you know, first project's more or less a uh, project, but it's more or less an exercise. So I think it'd be fine for that. Uh, get the size of it and it might be fine. Okay. Um, it's probably fine, I'm guessing. Uh, I mean, I'll I'm check. Just, I'm just, go ahead. I just, I said I'll check, but I just wanted to. Ask. Yeah, it's it's probably fine as long as it's not tiny. I just like the 11 by 17, but I don't necessarily know if I'm going to do projects that big or not, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Um, the India ink's fairly inexpensive. You might already have some of that. Um, a rigor, okay, so you guys get, um, <clears throat> uh, most of those brushes I just showed you, <clears throat> are cheapos okay i deliberately tested them out with ink because usually if i'm doing ink stuff i'll pull a better brush out and they work fine the difference is they're not going to last as long but they'll probably last. and the mm -hmm. other thing is as soon as you get done like keep your brushes wet while you're working on them and then when you get done wash them out immediately and use like if you don't have a brush soap then just use like a hand soap don't use things like um uh dish soap okay and think about your own hair, right? Um, you wouldn't wash your hair with dish soap, okay? It would trash your hair, right? And it does the same thing to these bristles. Even though these bristles, uh, these cheaper ones are usually nylon, they're just they're gonna just probably not last as long or be quite as good as a Series 7 or whatever, but you don't, they're fine. I was just using these and they were fine. You can get an inexpensive rigger. They're usually in the rack over, um, uh, whatever you call it, um, Blick. Okay, and you can just pull out a rigger and you can pull out like a triple lot um, round uh, and maybe get a, a single lot round, maybe a zero. Um, and th that's not going to cost you much more than, um, and then maybe get a little bigger round, like a normal, but you probably already have that. Um, and you can probably get all of those for around, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. Okay. Um, you don't have to get an architectural scale, like I said. Uh, 
I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. Actually, it'll be in the video. I show it in the video that I finishing up. And you can make that because you could use a regular brush I, or a regular ruler. I've used this edge of books. I've used all kinds of things. So it doesn't have to be that. I just I just prefer that. Um, let's see. For um, things like uh, thumbnails, because we'll do a lot of thumbnailing in here. I like to get a kind of a. Here, let me flip this. No, no. I like to get like a flare or a or a um, just a fat felt tip. I love flares, and because when I'm doing these um, thumbnails, I want this to be nice and bold. Okay. I don't want to get fussy with it. I just want it to be really bold, just to convey my ideas. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get yeah. fussy with it. So a nice big fat, you know, it's not huge fat, but it's a really nice drawing pin for that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and the tube of white gouache is just for, um, well, I'll show you how to mix it with watercolor. Okay. And it will take out some of your stuff. Um, any questions on that? So you could keep it minimal. You don't have to get every single thing on here really. Um, I think the brush bin thing is a good thing to do because it can, it can just instant. You don't want to have to always go every time I practice my inking, I want to pull out all my inking tools. You can just pull out a brush pin, go and draw people like I do at a coffee shop or something and just practice. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cause you're going to yes. find out the whole inking thing is built into the sensitivity of your hand. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, you've got to just kind of kiss that edge of that paper. Okay. And then kind of lean on it and get these nice, fat, thin, thick lines and things like that. And that's all hand skills, okay? And, you know, <clears throat> I always have an extra – I always keep my crappy sheets of uh, screw-ups and things like that. And then I use those to test my <clears throat> – I warm up my hands on it. I never start an ink drawing or anything not warmed up, okay? <clears throat> okay. Who's got their mic on? Somebody's got their mic on. Hey, Jesse. Yeah. Where'd you guys go on that road trip? Do we drove from California to Cleveland. So we kind of took a southern route. We took the 40 for a lot of it. Was it fun? I love road trips. Yeah, I love being on the road. I mean, it's kind of a weird time. I've done it a couple times. It's kind of a weird time to do it because the pandemic. Yeah. But we just stayed at national parks, which was really awesome because they were pretty empty. Wow. I wouldn't have thought, yeah. I wouldn't have thought there was, everybody was going. I know. That's what I thought too. But I think everybody's kind of going back to school this week. So I think that's probably why. And maybe pandemic reasons too, but which was nice because we're trying to social distance and all that fun stuff. Ugh. So it was all right. We kind of hauled ass. We didn't really take our time though. I love to just get in the car, go, and then just go, um, just paint wherever I feel like painting. Yeah. That's what I've been doing a lot lately. Oh, right on. Have you gone anywhere new or anywhere no, that you haven't I, gone before? I love, I'm in love with the, um, <clears throat> the port of LA. Mm -hmm. So I go down there a lot. <clears throat> I'm down in the industrial part. And okay. I go to, um, uh, what is it, um, L.A. downtown, like certain areas downtown, just paint on the street. Um, where else? Oh, and up here in the mountains. Oh, nice. Oh, and then, like, I'll go down towards the desert and things like that. Oh, right on. And it's weird because I don't have any sensitivity to heat, really. Um, and so I can just sit on the street with no shade or anything. It's like 105, and it doesn't bother me for some reason. Lucky you. <laughs> well, the I cool think you're secretly it, a demon. That's probably why. Jeez. Uh, what I like about it is that nobody's out. When it's that hot, nobody's out. So I, I have everything to myself. Yeah, but then who are you? Oh, well, I guess if you're drawing buildings and things, not like people. I was going to say, where are the people then? No. Uh, well, yeah. It's like I, I, I'm not, I can't do my normal just drawing all the time, all day long like I normally do, like people. Because you mm -hmm. don't know. So, and I love to paint anyway, so I just go out and I paint places and stuff. Nice. 
Okay, well, let's go. I'm gonna start talking about this real quick because uh, we, this will be a short thing today. I'm gonna, um, um, hang on. Hang on a sec, you guys. I'm screwing up here. I just lost my um. Crap. I just lost my um. My window for this. Okay, hang on, you guys. I gotta find out how to get my bar back. I don't know where it is. Okay, you can see me now, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so let me pull this up. And I don't have any ads in here? Which I don't uh, have. I was, I was right? trying to add. Okay, so make sure I get this number before the class. Okay. 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 Hey, let me let me screenshot this room right now, you guys. Hang on. Hang on. I've already got one here. I just gotta organize this real quick. Hang on. Okay. My other class today was digital drawing. Let me screen grab this. Okay, so I think I already told you guys. I screen capped the room on, on a normal day today. I won't get anybody for late. Um, on a normal day, I screen cap it when I come in. That's everybody who's on time. And then I screen cap it sometime during the class, and that's everybody who's late. Where's, who's David Steenblock? Oh, I'm here. Hello. You got an LCAD uh, address? Yeah, I went to the school there for a little while. What'd you think? Um, it was cool, but one, it's really expensive. And, sure. and then two, I was getting kind of frustrated with their animation program there. I've heard and, things about that. Yeah, and I, and I met Phil and he convinced me to switch over to Fullerton. So I'm excited. Yeah, I think that's probably a good move. Um, not that I think LCAT's terrible or anything, but they're really expensive. And yeah. I don't think expensive is even bad, but like, if I'm going to pay that kind of cash, then it should be at Art Center or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I had a, uh, hang on, I'm trying to find this stupid file. Why is this? I have to clean off my desktop. It's a total mess. All right. I found it. You should see Phil's. It's really bad. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me, actually. He tried comparing himself to Albert Einstein. He's like, he was messy. And we're like, no, Phil, that, that's not how that works. Yeah, he was also a genius. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like it when people try and use somebody else to justify their own bullshit. Um, OK, so let's go. Let me find this. So I want to start talking about this simple idea of graphic shapes, okay? Because it's the easiest way for me to get moving on here. And it's a little different than um, you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Never shows me, which kind of sucks. Okay, so what I'm doing, starting to do here on this document, is I'm starting to go.
I'm starting to go, I'm just starting to break these things into graphic shapes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, we're not doing this sort of more realistic eye thing. I mean, you can do it a little bit more like that, but, you know, we're starting to do this kind of, you know, um, uh, what do you call that? Graphic symbols of it, okay? Because um, I want to get your heads out of, a lot of times people have been doing, um, you know, whether it's live drawing or whatever, which is great, um, except they have to get their head out of that because what they'll do is they'll go, okay, I'm doing a character, because we're talking about cartooning here, so this, I want you guys pushing everything, okay? This is about big graphic shapes. Um, you know, so they'll sit here and they'll go, okay, here's the eyebrow and then there's the plane and here's the nose comes out and, you know, and they have a hard time getting out of that sort of idea of, and that's, I'm not knocking it, by the way, you need life drawing and all that, okay? But you got to kind of start to go, you know, like with old guys, like let's take an old guy here, <clears throat> or I could take any of these eyes, let's say, let's find it. Let me get this over here. Well, let's do this one. I could take any of these shapes. Oops. You know, and start mixing and matching them into these different head shapes, okay? I could take a nose shape, blah, 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 okay? <clears throat> Hang on. <clears throat> and I want you guys to keep these things really simple for the time being. But like what I was just what I was going to say is a lot of times when I, I don't know why I do this. It's just something I've noticed because I love drawing old guys. So if you, you can go to McDonald's and almost any McDonald's, if you go there early in the morning, there's always groups of old guys um, like in their 80s that are all buddies and they sit around and read the paper and pontificate about the news and all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But one thing, I don't know why, I always tend to draw their ears really low. <clears throat> I don't know why, okay? <clears throat> Give them a little more of this business, start to age them up a little. A little more stuff under the eyes. Maybe some big brows. A little more of this chin stuff. All this stuff that starts to separate the face, okay? Maybe he's got a little bit of hair left. Maybe I can give him a pair of glasses down here. So on and so forth. Okay, does that make sense? Give him a little more chin, a little fatter chin. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, if you're working from reference, which isn't bad, do yourself a favor and look for these kind of really obvious shapes. Okay. You can push these. However you want to push them. I'm really pushing his ears here. I'll leave this guy. That guy actually looks like this guy I used to work with. <laughs> okay, maybe a little fatter here. And maybe I'll have his neck jut out a little. I'm not, I don't really care about going this far. I only care about going this far or about here, okay? But you know, he's, there's a lot of girth here. He's starting to get a little heavy. So, you know, I could put a small bow tie on there to push the, you know, the size relationships and things like that, okay? Uh, uh -huh. I could take this guy, I'm gonna give him a little more three quarter view. So I'm gonna push this over that axis. You can play around with this if you want. Um, I'm gonna take these girly eyes here. Mic on. There it goes. Um, I'm going to tilt the nose up a little here. 
give it a little fatter upper lip because I'm looking at like this kind of idea here. Give her a little more of a chin. Also a little more girthy. Now I could do some hair on here. And maybe a big earring. Okay, this one's more of a gourd shape, so I probably would go, I always use um, Ted Kennedy as an example of this. The, the thing with the big giant head, but all the features pushed into the middle, okay? Because Ted Kennedy had this massive pumpkin head, but all his features are kind of pushed into the middle. So I might do something like that here. Big double chin. Maybe a baseball hat turned a little bit sideways. Have you ever seen Jack Ma? Hmm? Have you ever seen Jack Ma? I don't think so. Uh, owner of like uh, Nibala and whatnot. He's, um, he's got all of his facial features pushed in really heavy. It's yeah. kind of funny to look at. He's kind yeah. of funny to look at if you decide to search him up. He's pretty funny. Jack Ma. And then I can also go... Do the same thing with eyebrows. I can go, I'm just going to make these big squares maybe. You know, I could do um, eyebrows, you know, they're real bushy like that. Um, you know, you could do thin ones, maybe tapered. You know, all sorts of different things. I could put them this way. Get a snarkier look. <clears throat> all these different types of noses. Um, does that all make sense, you guys? Okay. And then if you want to start, you know, if you start getting comfortable with this kind of thing, I want them very graphic. Yeah. I don't want them, like, really realistic or anything. I want them graphic. I want to start twisting your mind or... or Transition your mind into that. If you haven't already done it, a lot of you probably have. That idea of keeping a little bit of solidity and structure in the drawing, but it's cartoony. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to, um, I'm going to let you guys kind of roam in here because you got to find your own thing. Okay. I just want good work. That's it. Okay. Now here's the other thing when we get to inking that you're going to have to understand. You, we're going to have to develop your drawing, which is the one I, do, I did. Where is it? So this guy, and I put it in the video. Can you guys see that? This little bear guy, right? Because I just needed yeah. something to I needed something to ink. And I, I, I have bear friends up here. So that's, this is, a, that's Torpedo, the bear, right? He lives over on the other side of the lake. Um, so anyway, I have to start doing that. So we're going to start approaching that. And then another, okay, so I want you to start doing this. Hang on. Let me get rid of this. Ugh, this thing always, Zoom puts all your windows where you don't want them, which is kind of weird. Um, let me get rid of this. I want you to create, and you can look at reference, it's fine, okay? Now, one of the sites that we were playing with last term, so anybody who's in my class last term knows this. Um, hey, Jesse. Yeah. What was the name of that? Was it Planet of People of Earth? Oh, hang on, let me look it up really quick. I have it saved. The one with all the state fair stuff and all that? <laughs> yeah, I think I know. Well, we, we're doing the tutorial list, but I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, what was that one called? Where is it? Earthworld. 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 I'll drop the link in the chat right now. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Okay, whatever. Um, let's look in here. So these are just like mostly people, I think like state fairs or something. 
Um, but there's a lot of interesting looking people in here. You guys, does that make sense? Look at this dude. I don't know why it's not getting bigger. There it goes. Or this guy or whatever, right? This seems like all those people you don't think really exist out in the world, but then they do. Yeah, but these guys are fun to riff off of. But like, okay, so let's look at this guy real quick. And by the way, I'm going to put a video up that I did for another class <clears throat> that talks about how I push this stuff. I'll put it up right after class, okay? <clears throat> Where did this guy go? Like even maybe, let's see. Like this guy. <coughs> let's see if we can pull this off of here. Is that Frank in the future? Yeah, <laughs> he'll love that. Speaking of which, he got me addicted to Coke Zero. When I took Maya with him, I started drinking it, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, I don't uh, – I'm trying to lay off of all that stuff. I like it, too, but I don't have that many vices left, so it's like, you know what? Somebody goes like, wow, you put a lot of salt on it. It's like, get off my back, man. I've already given up all my good vices. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can find this. Because I want to use this guy because you'll see his shape, I think, very easily. Where the hell did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so let's pull this guy up. And I'll pull maybe two when I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. And let's trim this down. I'm not going to concentrate on his entire body for this one. Oops. But if you look at his head shape, it's pretty squarish. And oh, by the way, I'm not worried about likenesses here. I'm worried about just shape building. Does that make sense? I don't care. Yes. We'll yeah. talk about caricature later on. Okay. And this is a little different than caricature to me, but he's got a very, you know, you can play around. He's got a really, you know, this interesting sort of tapered chin thing going on. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. And then he's got, so let's put an axis here. He's got this really great nose that's angled up which is really fun. And, and then I love this, obviously. <laughs> and I'm just trying to keep this really simple. I'm not gonna worry about that expression too much. You know, and then I can come in here and kind of, and I, I'm gonna add a little bit of that indication of that arch right there. I'm gonna make these probably a little smaller. And I'm deliberately trying to sort of push it out a little bit of where we started from. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna I like to give have them always giving you the side eye for some reason. And then I'm gonna give them some really bushy eyebrows. And then if you look here, look, he's giving you a design idea right there. You see that in the hair? Yeah. You know, so now I can start thinking of it maybe that way. I get like that political cartoon vibes. The what? The, the political cartoons. Yeah, yeah. I love political cartoons. You They're know, and then I might put a little more of this. You know, and then eventually I might go. And put this on, let's go, uh, God, I hate the way they set up the new, um, let's just do this. And I would do this with watercolor. I might come in here. 
and start to build um, that kind of thing. And I'd probably start really pushing the hair. Oops. Put a little bit more over here. And I'm just sort of following what I'm seeing there and I'm trying to interpret it. Does that make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now you don't have to get, and I'd have to adjust him and all that sort of thing. Um, but what I'm saying is, it's, and then there's a lot of things I look at as I'm looking at this, like the way that forehead kind of comes through. And then there's this big bony cheek mass and then this sort of chin thing. So now I would probably start to push it a lot further because my hands are getting warmed up. And, you know, maybe push this again. Some more. Maybe I'll give him a little bit of a soul patch under here. Soften that a little bit. Maybe give him a different kind of eyes this time. Makes him look a little older. Give him some weight under his eyes. Get him a little older. And then I'm going to go back to this again. You know, and then build it all back up again. And then I'd probably give him a little bit of an Adam's apple there. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm looking at it very geometrically, okay? Now, the best way to start doing this is to start off you know, find people who, let me find another one real quick here. So I'm going to ask you for two things on Monday, right or uh Tuesday. And these are basically just going to be simple shape breakdowns, okay? Like this guy. Right? Let's get rid of this guy. I mean, this guy can really look at and probably go, Pretty square, it's more or less like that. And I could look at him as a pretty square headed guy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Go when you start doing this, pick ones that are that, that are really clear to you. Okay. You know, and then I could, you know, obviously push this. Look at his hair. He's got like that old weird feathered hair. And then really that kind of shape for the nose, you guys can see that, right? And then oops. But what I like here is this. I love this weird little boy's part kind of thing. Again, I'm going to make his ears a little bigger. Got the big douche wrap around sunglasses. Oops, hang on. When that does that, it means I have to calibrate my pen. Which irritates the hell out of me. Come on. Okay. I have no control over this, so. Okay. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Okay. Um, the th reason I like this, part of the reason I like this hair is, A, it's weird for a guy his age, but also 
I can come in here now and go, again, from a design perspective, I can turn this and I can start getting that nice little shine on his hair. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm always thinking design, okay? Got a nice shadow under his nose here, which I like. You know, nice kind of a little bit of a double chin a little bit. This kind of comes in here, which is kind of interesting. And the neck, shirt. Okay. I'll put a little hair back here, even though you can't really see it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, no? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Um, and what I want you guys to see is that we're always starting this with, am I good? I'm not stopped, right? No. No. I'm starting this with more or less this. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I can start adding these weird things like this weird little cheek mass here. He's very jowly, okay? Uh, which means this probably comes down a little more there. Um, but I'm, we're always starting off. We have to start off like this, okay? Because we have to, when we get to is we're going to do an animal shape, you know, like with the bear, I go, well, there's this shape. It's basically a square here. It's nose. You know, and then I can just figure out the sort of, maybe a little bit of a belly. Back arm swinging out, this one swinging forward. You know, and I just start building all this stuff from very basic ideas. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. They kind of. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, the bear. I don't. <laughs> this might sound silly, but just the shape of it, the way it looks to me, uh, I can't see it now. But I thought it looked kind of like a cute little like gerbil thing. Uh, yeah. not that dissimilar in shape, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. The bear, my point with the bear is I'm starting off with this very simple, I, I just throw things down. Right. Hang on. That's weird. Hang on. It throws stuff onto the other side and I can't see it, so then it stops me. So then I'd have to sort of Fatten up this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fatten this leg down. This, I, they usually have sort of a, a lot of mass under the arm. And then I can start to build the, um, you know, more of the girth of it, like this belly. Right, right. This. The shape of it reminds me of like a pear. Yeah, it is. That's exactly what I'm thinking of when I'm drawing it, actually. Because yeah. it is more or less... Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I'm just going, okay, where he's got little short legs. You know, they've got these really short little paw feet, right? You got a lot of girth under here, and that gives me a place to show a lot of fur. You know, and then I got to build the head shape, which is just the snout and the, you know, the ears. Um, if you ever look at them up close, if you ever look at them up close, because I get them, uh, I just, one just was over here a couple weeks ago. And I, want, I always go outside and hang out with them when they show up. And, um, you know, because I can study them up close. You know, they're 20 feet away and they just sit there. They hang out. And um, I was just sitting there watching them for, you know, 15 minutes or something, you know. And finally he moseyed off. But they're really um, kind of weirdly formless up close. It's hard to, 
you know, especially if they're in a zoo or something, because they start getting fatter and they feel like kind of a hefty bag full of water, kind of, you know, where they get sort of formless. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm always just throwing it down, then shaping it. Make sense? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So let's take this another direction. So I want you guys to give me about two pages of those 11 by 17. I don't okay. care if they're on paper and I don't care if they're on or digital. I don't care. Okay. okay. Two pages. And then I also want you to do two pages. And I just did these before class real quick. Let's hear shapes. Shit. Where is it? Here. So I sort of took these things that I found around the house and just started building ideas off of them. This one I never got figured out. Okay, so these just sort of, um, you can use anything for this, okay? So this one just using um, that shape. So you can see where I'm starting at, correct? Yeah. And I don't care what you do with them, okay? This one I'm still trying to figure out right here. This one I thought was gonna be a head shape, but for some reason I started doing a body on them and start, and then it started to become sort of this, like maybe, you know, you know, maybe he's like a wrestler or something. I started thinking about him having those kind of shorts on, maybe a big belt. Oops, there goes my pen again. Hang on. This is why I hate walking, by the way. Or one of the Huh? There. Hasn't been doing it that much lately, but all of a sudden it is. Okay, so taking this shape. And the, re the thing that kind of threw me into that idea was this little knot right here in the middle. It just reminded me of the knees being like right there. And then the feet sort of splayed out from that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I don't know why then the hand shape goes to this. Head shape. And then I start thinking about where the anatomy is. If he's that girthy, he's going to have that, that kind of thing going on. It's a little stylized. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Mike, when we do this, do you want us to include the pictures the way yours is? Yeah, because I want to go over them. Yeah, because I got to kind of see where you're coming from. I'm going to tilt his head down a little bit. You know, and then I can start to work out things like where the fingers are, where the fat pad is in the hand, maybe an elbow. You're going to have a line there and there. Get this a little more. And then maybe he's wearing boots. Okay, do you guys understand that concept? Yeah. One that I want to figure out is this guy. Because it reminds me, and I can't I haven't quite dialed it in yet. It remind it started going to monkey for some reason. But um I love this this. But what I like is if this starts to imply one of those propeller hats. You guys have ever seen those? Yeah. Where they have the little cap. You know, but I haven't figured out the face yet, which doesn't matter. And it keeps going to monkey for some reason. So maybe that's fine, I guess. 
be like a long neck collar, big floppy. hat. I don't know. I can't get that one figured out for some reason. It doesn't matter. I don't care about them being all figured out. I just want you to start riffing on shapes. Okay. It doesn't matter what they are. It could be almost anything. Okay. Um, you know, this, this would be good. A little Higgins bottle, right? Um, just there's a million things around the house. Okay. Just shoot a picture of it, you know, and take a look at it. Right. You can do it live, but I just want to see a picture of the, what you started with. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I just want two pages of each, 11 by 17, two pages of each. Head shapes. And, and I want you guys to start playing with the graphic language of this kind of idea. And right now, um, look, here's the thing I would say about this, like this eye shape, the noses. I, I bet you you would run out, you'll start to run out it like, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, and then go and go, okay, because nobody invented this stuff. Like, I like this kind of stuff right here where you start going, hey, what, what can I do with two inverted triangles, you know? What can I do with this? And what can I do with this? Can I do something with this? And I just start doing all these different shapes of things and seeing what I can get out of them. But when you start like running out, go out and go, um, uh, let's see. Um, you tend to do a little more realistic stuff. I mean, it's stylized, but it's realistic. You know, how's Mort Drucker handling eye shapes, you know? Does that make sense? Now, these are more realistic, okay, but they're still cartoony. This guy's a monster inker, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at these inks, watch. See all that, the power of that black in there? Look at this one. Okay. And here and there, he just punches in a, a big black mass, okay? Or go to... Uh, don't go to entertainment people. Try and stay away from that. Even though Carter Goodrich is a uh, character designer, to me, he's a different thing. Let's what about it. like Al Hirschfield? Well, yeah. But go here and go, you know, how, get some ideas for eyes, man. Rip them straight off. He didn't invent any of these. None of us did, okay? They're, they're cartoon eyes, man. But, you know, it's good to go in here and go, just go, oh, that's a cool idea, you know? Um, okay? <coughs> How's he handling mouths? How's he handling this? And just rip off a few of them. You're just, you're just trying to figure them out and learn them, okay? Uh, look at these. I love this stuff for its simplicity. Oops. So, look at that. He didn't invent any of this. It's all fair game. But you got to add to your vocabulary. And then you'll just start riffing on your own and going, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? And just come up with them, okay? Same thing with noses, same thing with mouths, same thing with everything. But we want to get them down to a graphic shape, okay? Simple graphic shape, okay? Because we can't do anything until we sort of get there. And then, yeah, Al Hirschfeld is a monster.
he's kind of the master of caricature because he could do it with so little. Oh, have you heard of the book, uh, Cartoon Modern? I don't think so. I was able to get my hands on it and it's got a lot of really good stuff, just like Al Hirschfield and all that kind of like era of like, um, I forgot what it's called, but those like simple TV animations they used to have all the time. Oh, like UPA? Uh-huh, there we go, that's the one. Yeah, you should check it out. Look at his. He died at the edge of 100. Yeah, he died at 100, yeah. I thought he was 99, I didn't think he needed to. Really interesting thing about him, though, there's a documentary on him that's really good called The Lion King, L-I-N-E. And uh, he was a real oh, character, right? And he, he really had all his faculties until he got really old. And then uh, he married another woman, so his wife died. And there's, a, there's an extra on the DVD, and you can find it on YouTube, I think. And it's, he's starting to lose it, but he's in his studio, and he's doing a drawing of a... Because he would do the theater section of the New York Times. So these are all theater um, actors and stuff. And he's sitting, he had a barber chair and his drafting board in his, in his studio and he's losing it. And his, his wife um, comes in and she goes, uh, Al, do you want to eat lunch? And he goes, yeah, sure, that sounds fine. He just sits there and keeps drawing. She goes, Al, do you want to eat lunch? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. She goes, okay, then you need to stop. And he goes, okay, just tell me when you want me to stop. And she goes, Al, stop. And then he stops, okay? Knocks out this beautiful drawing, right? And the thing that's interesting to me about that is that's so ingrained to, in, to who he is that he's losing his faculties, but he could still do that. Does that make sense? That's totally crazy to me. It's like that is at the essence is, is who he was, okay? Because he's losing everything else, but he could still knock out a beautiful drawing and it goes into the New York Times even though he's not functioning all that well anymore. It was really interesting. And the way she had to stop him from doing it, you know, like she had to go stop doing that. You know what I mean? Because he loves doing it, you know? And I think he kept working up until he died, I think. Anyway, go ahead. I was just gonna say, there's another book too um, of the characters from like, from Sardis in New York. Oh yeah, yeah. And they have a really cool book too. That's a great idea too, yeah. I haven't seen that book. That sounds interesting. I saw it at the restaurant like three years ago, two years ago, something like that. But the thing you got to look at here is his design. Like, I mean, look, it's, I love the way he would do this, where he would leave the whole arm out and just do this calligraphic line and right up into the hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, just kidding. Don't try to look for the book that I uh, recommended. It's $236 now. Oof. I bought it for 90. That's oof. I'll just steal yours. <laughs> you oh, wish. My... I have the best concept art like He disappeared. Collection. I'm not, my... as, I'm not as interested in concept art. Yeah, what were you going to say? Concept art to me starts to feel very ancestral. I suppose... To me. I bought a book on my on Michael's that is that has like a, a book that's called How to Draw Characters on Shapes. That I have that I bought it on Michael's. Probably the same concept. Yeah. I mean I didn't invent any of this stuff. It's um drawing is all shape language, painting is all shape language. And then when we're doing talking about cartooning, um it it's all about shape language. It's all about pushing the forms and all that kind of stuff. Now, here's the thing. When we get into, because everything in here, <clears throat> like on my Friday class, I'll let people go find drawings and use those drawings because it's a straight up paint handling class, paint mechanics class. This, I want you doing your own stuff. But what you got to understand is when we're going to do something in ink it or whatever, um, you, it's got to be a very finished, balanced drawing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, you cannot, and I was just saying this. I see this on YouTube, not YouTube, on Instagram all the time, uh, where people will go, um, they're inking really crappy drawings, which is super weird to me, because I'm like, why would you do that? Um, or like this guy I used to work with who's terrible. He uh, posted some crappy pencil drawing, and he goes, hey, I just ran across this drawing. I think I might ink it. And it's like, why would you ink such a crappy drawing? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. 
Like, you, you don't eat crappy drawings, okay? The other thing you guys might want to do is get a, get a, like a, you could use a graphite pencil and like a red pencil or a graphite pencil and a, a blue pencil or whatever, or a, or a black prisma and a blue prisma. You might want to have two so we can rough out our drawings that way. I'll talk about that next week um, on paper, okay? And obviously the reason you're doing that is you're finding the form with the blue and then you're, you're cleaning and picking up the lines. It works really good for inking because you can take your, your sort of rough, because you do want to start rough, okay? And then you can take that black pencil and go in and pick out the lines that are working really well then I might throw another, and that might be good. Then I might throw another piece of trace over it, uh, draft dot it down, and start cleaning it up a little bit. And then I'm going to flip it. The whole time I'm flipping it to see if it's balanced or not. And sometimes I work on it backwards for a while to balance it out. And then I start to end up with a pretty nice um, balanced drawing. Okay. And then I'm also working out what I'm going to do with the ink a little bit with that. Okay. So I'm coming in and going, I'm going to go kind of fat on that line right there, and I'm going to pull some hair out right there to show fur, and I'm starting to work out how I'm going to do the fur, and I'm starting to think about how I'm going to ink it just with a pencil because on this trace paper, on the sketch paper that I was telling you this, right, and this, this stuff will either be called, if you go to Blick and you walk into Blick, it's on the last aisle on the left where they have all the flat files, it's on the other side, they have this paper, okay? I wouldn't get the big long one. I'd just get this one. And it's usually pretty cheap, but 12 bucks. And this stuff will last like a long time, okay? But the nice part about it is for design. Like when I draw, normally, I don't really erase stuff, okay? I just draw very light and loose, and I just readjust, right? On this stuff, because I'm designing, I'll take and make sure you have a kneaded eraser, too. I'll take a kneaded eraser and just take stuff out and then redesign it in. So I'm, I'm designing at that point. I'm not really correcting the drawing as much as I'm designing the drawing. Or I might try something with the fur and go, that doesn't work, I'll erase it out and try something else. So I have at least a starting point when I go to ink. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I really want you guys to get good at ink. I'm excited about it because I just don't feel like there's that many people do it that well anymore. I mean, there's people out there who are uh, fantastic at it, but I don't see that many students doing it, okay? Um, I'll also give you guys my, uh, I have these brushes in here. I'll give you all my, but these might come in handy in this class if you do any digital stuff. And you don't have to. With these right here, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. These right here, what they're called, uh, I forgot what the TGTS stands for, but it's called the Rusty Nib. It's a set of ink brushes, okay? So um, they're actually pretty nice brushes. And there's a couple of things in here uh, that I think are really cool. And I'll put these up. I'll, I already have them up. I'll give you guys a link under announcements, and you can just go download them. Uh, and I do this. I like to preface this by saying I don't believe in giving people's work away for free, and somebody made these. I paid for them. The deal for me is you guys are students. I know when I was a student, I was broke as hell. Okay, so I get that. All I'm asking is that when you guys, you know, you're making money and stuff like that, make sure you're paying for all this stuff. Stop with the free shit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I can't ask students to go out and buy fifty dollars worth of digital brushes. I, I just, I can't do that. Okay, at least I don't think I should. So these are just nice. If you get close here. You got a nice ink quality to them, right? Um, there's a few, there's a bunch of different ones in here. So these are really nice for that old, like we were talking about earlier, that old UPA style and things like that. Um, and then there's also in here, <coughs> there's a whole bunch of them. Then there's brush pins. These are pretty nice. See how that's nice dagger edge? See that? Mm -hmm. That's really important. That's a nice brush. Um, what is that? Dry feather. Man, that's a nice one. Anyway, um, and then down here, so there's a whole bunch of them in here. Brush inkers, uh, watercolor. These watercolor ones are actually pretty nice. Um, this one here. Oops, no. 
Where is it? Here. These are pretty nice. Um, they get a pretty nice watercolor effect. And then you can come in here. They have a smudge in here. You can start getting a little more of a, um, I was thinking, um, a little more, but I like to use these. Hang on. So I could come in here and go, maybe this one. That gives it a really nice kind of watercolor edge. So point being, there's going to be some things where you can um, use watercolor or use a traditional if you want, so on and so forth. Okay, so we could get some really nice. I want you to do the original thing with watercolor and ink. I just think it's if you're talking about cartooning, it's a base fundamental skill set. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and we're going to get into caricature, shape design, inking, wash, gouache. Special effects, mixed media, um, digital. Um, my, this guy, I, I, I always go back and I start looking at stuff. And obviously, this guy was a monster um, inker and watercolor guy. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. I hate it when this thing goes slow during a class. There it goes. So let's go. Look at this. <coughs> you know, this kind of stuff. <coughs> now that's really simple, you know. But what's, what's tricky about it, like this, see how he's throwing this um, branch in the silhouette, which is ink, right? And then how he's not using ink here. That's the, the, the thing that's important, what to, what to use what and where, how he loses the line completely back here a little bit. And then he did a, I loved his, because um, it really shows his design work with the ink. Ink, is, you really got to design the ink, okay? I love Bill Waterston. Oh, yeah, who doesn't? I have all of his books. <laughs> So look at this. Yeah, he was great. Mm -hmm. Still around. Just he disappeared, which is super cool, actually. Look at this massing of this black. Wow. That is really cool. And then look at this back leg back here, all ink. That's how you got to start thinking. And the re I'm always going to give you guys a heads up. So I want you to start thinking about this stuff now. We're going to do an animal with a, just a simple background. The one I did for. Um, for the, I use this guy, and I just put a couple of pine trees behind him to actually show what I just talked about, where the pine trees have no ink. So it's a combination of ink and watercolor. Um, I want you to, hang on. I just want you to see the, um, I pulled some really good ones yesterday. I should have downloaded them. You just did all this really cool, oh, it's probably over here. Like, look at this one. This one's a little more realistic, but still cool. Oops, where'd it go? Oh, that's too small. Hang on. <laughs> that's way too small. Oh, there we go. But look, how, look how he masses this ink right here. Masses, ink, masses this, and then it goes into full mass right there. Mass it here. That is like tricky stuff, man. And then if you notice, he sort of, okay, you can see a little bit right there where he's pulling out those rat tails off of it. What does that do? It starts to create the, the it implies a, a mid-tone. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where people screw up is they just put a big black shape and you go, that disconnects. It's like, it's not reading as part of the form. But where mm -hmm. you pull out that rat tail, now I'm going dark, mid-tone to color. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Nice transition. We'll talk about it more. Go ahead. I was just saying it's a nice transition. Yeah. Who's talking? Oh, David. It's me, David. I'm just listening. So. No, I want to. Are we going to do more advanced stuff, kind of like Heinrich Klei, or is it more going to be like the simplistic kind of cartooning? Which if I like both, so it doesn't matter. You can but. pull off uh, Heinrich Clay. My hat's off to you. All right, challenge. Uh, I don't, uh, we're going to go through a myriad of things. I don't want to just stick in one thing all the time. In your search parameters, Mike, you know, you can set the photos to come up as large so that you have always. I set them right here. They were at large. A lot of times I do that, it still comes up small. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but those dinosaurs flying jets are so funny. Yeah, those are great. What I, oh, this looks like a good one. My son, I was talking about this last night. God damn it, see what I mean? Uh, this is what I love. Look how he throws that whole head into shadow. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And then look at this leg here. It leaves a little bit poking out. Look at this. All this stuff. I'll find some really good ones because I love this dinosaur stuff. But my kid, when this stuff was still running in the paper, Bill Watterson had the whole, or Calvin Hodge had the whole top part of, you know, big newspaper. He had the whole top half of it, right? And I didn't know much about Calvin and Hobbes then, and my, but my kid loved it. So my kid was reading it in the paper when he was a little kid. And that was one of the ones where he did dinosaur stuff. Yeah, And I remember it walking past him, looking over his shoulder, and it was so bold because of his, all that black um, and so well drawn. And I stopped and looked at it, and I go, who is that? And he goes, it's Calvin Hobbes. And I go, holy crap, that dude can draw, man. I mean, this dude can draw, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, But it, what I love about it is it's all in service to story, stylization. You know, he could draw his ass off, but his drawings are so simple right um and then what i loved about it too is like yeah you could tell he loved having that big space to play in because all the other guys got these little strips and he's got this half of a newspaper page which is huge and you could tell he just loved playing on it like you could tell he was going man i can't wait for him to run this it's gonna be killer you know what i mean right sense of play to me is so much fun you know and when in this and all the stuff that you guys are doing, all these classes you guys are doing, whatever, it's hard work, but there's got to be fun in it. Okay, and we're talking about cartooning here. We should be having some fun. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was pure misery. <laughs> I've always loved, um, you know, goofing on people with drawings. And when I used to work with people who also did that, they were it was so much fun. I've got a stack of them, and I've got to get from my house of ones that this animator guy used to work at Disney and worked with me over another part of Disney. And he would just draw me all the time. And, um, you know, and I'd draw him and everybody's drawing each other all the time. And it was just so much fun stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was all off the cuff stuff. There wasn't anybody putting a lot of time into it or anything. But they were just funny. You know what I mean? They were just, you know, and they'd be up all over the place or somebody would leave them on your, your monitor, some insult, because they were always insulting. You know, they were never flattering. Um, which is the fun of it. You know what I mean? That's why when people come to me and go, Hey, can you do a caricature of blah, blah, blah? I always go, no, because now you're taking the fun out of it. Now I have to be, um, they tried to do it at the school where they go, Hey, we want to do this Christmas thing with Schultz, you know, president Schultz. And I go, I don't want to do that because the whole fun of caricaturing people is being a little bit mean. You know what I mean? And I don't really want to piss off the president of the school. You know what I mean? And then if I have to draw them all nice, then it's not that much fun. Does that make sense? Unless he was the kind of guy that actually had a good sense of humor. But he has a good sense of humor. Okay. He does have a good sense of humor. And I think he'd be fine with it. It's just that yeah. it's in my mind and I'm going, eh. Yeah, because <laughs> you never know. Some people would like, oh, how dare you? Oh, Try. yeah. You know what's funny is somebody from the um, art. Okay, so we're in this age right now of all this hyper political correctness, okay? And what? No uh, way. <laughs> um, so somebody from the art department or art history program or whatever, they go, uh, I love your Instagram page, blah, blah, blah. And they always tell me this, right? And then she goes, how come you never draw women? And I go, A, I do. And B, what you just said is why. Is why I don't put a lot of money. Because if I, if I had a lot of money, then you'd say I'm doing something inappropriate. Does that make sense? 
up. Oh my God. Um, and, but the real reason is, is when I'm out drawing people, um, I, uh, I'm goofing. I'm, I'm not even goofing. I'm just playing with the shapes and stuff like that, which I'll do some videos on for you guys. Can you say that again? What's that? You're really late. Yeah. yeah. Did I cut out? Yeah. You cut out. And then you, I don't think you're hearing our responses on time. Oh, crap. Why? What's, who said something? Well, we just asked you to like repeat what you were saying about why you don't draw women, but you like our response. It's not that I don't draw women. <laughs> it's that they're not like a prominent on your page or whatever the whatever the point yeah, is. Yeah, but you do draw them. But it's not only that. It's like when I go somewhere to draw, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't care if I'm having fun goofing on some guy or whatever. I don't care. Because I don't really like guys to begin with, and um, their behavior is usually weird in public. And so I just feel like they're fair game. Whereas, like, I don't really want to insult women. Like, they might come over and go, "My nose isn't that big." It's like, no, it's not. I'm just fooling around. You know what I mean? But if a guy comes over and goes, "I'm not that fat," I'm like, "Look in the mirror, dude." You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't care with guys. I, I don't know why. I just don't. Um, and I don't want to hit somebody's sore spot or whatever with certain things or whatever. So to me, it's just you know. But the main thing I'm looking at when I go out and draw people, which is why it doesn't matter if it's guys or girls, um, I'm just looking for interesting shapes. That's all I'm looking for. So if someone happens to be sort of generic looking or whatever, I'm just probably not going to be drawn to drawing them. Or if somebody's hyper pretty or something, it's not really, that doesn't really do it for me. I want stuff with meaty shapes to play with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, it was just kind of interesting. It's interesting right now, all this kind of stuff in the age we're in right now. Um, it's just everybody gets offended about everything right now. And it's just kind of weird. Yeah, I'm hypersensitive. I, had, I have no intention, of, obviously, of offending people or whatever. But it's like, it's just weird. Well, you got to um, kind of watch everything you're doing right now. And you got to kind of keep up with what's going on a little bit because... You could do something that nowadays could be offensive that you don't even know about. You know what I mean? And you're not trying to do that at all, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I think you got to be a little bit, um, you also got to kind of ignore that at the same time. I mean, funny's funny. You know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned. This one, um, is that his pencil? Okay, another thing um, to think about. And I'll put some examples up, or we'll talk about it on uh, Tuesday, uh, is how they work. Like when you get into, because later on we'll get into different types of inking, um, how the ink can be really planned out. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The ink can be really planned out in the pencil stage, which tends to happen with comic books, okay? Like there, you'll see comic book pencil pages, and there's guys who just do the penciling, and there's people who just do the inking and things like that. Right. Um, right. But uh, how they'll work, they'll map out all the ink. Sometimes they'll just put a big X and that means this whole area is black and they'll do all the rat tails and all that stuff in the um, pencil. And that's telling the inker, you know, sometimes the inker is the pencil or two, but um, it's telling them just the design of the ink. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. And there's people, I mean, that are so insanely good at that. I mean, just insanely good at it. Um, that's all they do, okay? Well, it's Jesse. Yeah. That's all making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. I'm excited. So are we, just to double check something. Um, You're fading out. Um, we're doing two. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, now I can hear you. I think. No, I guess I don't. I think you're clear. Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Um, we're doing two pages of the simple breakdown of shapes, and then we're doing also two more pages of the objects from shapes like lamps and glasses. and So four, point, four I'll, I'll pages total. Do, yes, I want to do two pages that focus on simple shape faces, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll get into bodies and stuff later. And then two pages of, yeah, just objects, and we're turning them into different... And the, the objects, you can kind of, I don't care if it's body, heads, whatever, I don't care. 
Okay, cool. Okay. And somebody in the chat asked um, how many characters per page for the homework? Just the whole page. Cool. Like, don't give me one. This is what people do that I don't want. Number one, when you're doing this kind of thing, you don't really want to work really big. Because it, when you start working really big, it becomes a finished drawing, not a sketch anymore. Does that make sense? The other thing is, is they go, okay, here's my page. And they got two big drawings on the page. I'm like, okay, that means you didn't even get warmed up. And this is a, it's super important. You have to get warmed up in this. I mean, if I was, if when I sit down and do this, I can do this for hours. Like I can sit and do this for hours. The next thing I know, I've got a whole drawing done. You know what I mean? Um, because I'm just having fun. But I have got to get warmed up. When I'm working on this stuff, like doing these shape things or whatever, I have to get warmed up. And then once you get warmed up, man, then you're just on fire. But if you do like two big ones and that's all you do, you're not even warmed up. And you're not doing iterations. You got to do multiple iterations, multiple iterations, multiple iterations. And the other thing that's teaching you is when we start actually designing this, uh, you know, this, whatever we're going to ink, um, you got to learn to not be precious with your stuff. You got to learn to go try this and go, yeah, that's not so great. Uh, hey, that's kind of cool, but I think I'm going to push it over here. I always say with thumbnails and things like that, you don't know, you, or at least this is me, like maybe the first three passes, I'll go, that one's pretty good. I like that. But I don't know. And I'll go, that's it. I think that's it. But then I go and do 25 more. Okay. And then what's always interesting is I, that third one or whatever that I went, man, that's it. That's it. When I get to that 25th one, now I have something to contrast it with and compare it to. Where did I go? Um, uh, I get to that 25th one. I go, why did I even think that third one was good? It's not even good. Like, why did I think that was good? It wasn't, it's not good. You know what I mean? You don't know until you actually explore. Okay. And then you have to be able to go not be precious with these things. You spend five minutes on them, five minutes on them, five minutes on them. And then you learn to abandon and you learn to go, good enough is never good enough. Okay. It's annoying. You know, I, I've had to do that on jobs or right? I'm just out of time. I guess this has to be good enough. Then every time I see that product out in the world, I go, God, I hate that thing. You know what I mean? It looks terrible. It, it's, it wasn't finished. I, I didn't get to explore it enough because I had a day to do it, you know, and, and that stuff goes out into the world, you know, um, but you got to learn to not be precious with it. You got to learn to do a lot of iterations and, and you also got to learn you are going to draw 10,000 times better if you're sitting there drawing for a couple of hours in a, in a clip, okay, as opposed to 15 minutes where you're just not getting warmed up. I mean, I don't get warmed up in 15 minutes. It probably takes me at least a half an hour, okay? And I usually try, like when I go over and do those things over at Disney or whatever, I stop, I get breakfast, and I sit there and I draw people for like an hour to make sure that when I walk in there, I'm warmed up, you know what I mean? So I don't look like a dumbass. You know, with everybody going, this guy can't draw. You know what I mean? I got to get warmed up. You know what I mean? So I go in there and I'm hot. You know, I'm ready to go. Uh, and I try to do it with classes too. I try and warm up my hands before class starts or whatever. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so don't, you know, do. When I got things like this, if they said, hey, do two pages of this, I'm like, I'm going to do 10 pages of this, man, because it's fun. Like, I can do this all day. This is easy. Okay. I don't care if it's on paper and I don't care if it's digital. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But either way, I want 11 by 17. Now you could also do, if you don't have any 11 by 17 paper, which I think is a nice size. If you put two um, letter, uh, letter size pages together, that's 11 by 17, right? Um, so you can do four of those instead of two uh, 11 by 17. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, I, go ahead. Um, so if I do digitally, do, do we download that in the Google Drive? Do we upload our digital stuff in the Google Drive? Here's what's going to happen. Every, after every class, I'm going to edit the Zoom meeting. The Zoom meeting will be posted to um, the announcements. Okay. Now, a lot of times you're going to click the Zoom meeting and it's going to go, oh, this link is messed up. It's processing. It just means that I gave you the link before it's finished uploading. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad link. You just have to go back and it takes like an hour or two to upload. Okay. Um, also, okay. So you're going to have that. You'll have links to whatever it is. If we talked about any artists or products or anything like that, I'll link it there. And then you'll have the word folder. It'll be bolded. 
you click the folder that's the folder for the Google Drive okay and then that's the stuff that I want a half an hour before class starts which will be 430 I want it in there by 4 and what's going to happen is that's the work that we're going to work on in class that day that's the stuff that I'm going to overlay and correct and do all that kind of stuff does that make sense mm -hmm. okay yeah um, and then also it'll be the same format pretty much every day um, if I'm late on it, uh, I'll get, I mean, I always have the folder up there, but I try and edit the video right after class. The only problem with that is that like, if there's, if like in the beginning, what I do usually with the class the zoom thing, cause I think, I don't like you guys have to sit here and take notes. So I think it's just way better to be able to go back to video and just go, Oh yeah, that's how they did that or how you did that. Um, or whatever the corrections were or whatever. Cause I don't like people sitting there taking notes. It's, it, it distracts you from, you know, what we're doing. Um, you know, and I usually edit out the first 10 minutes because the first 10 minutes is me going, can you hear me and all that crap. And then if there's big technical problems in it, I'll edit that stuff out. I'll just edit out things that I think should get out of there. So it takes me about an hour to edit it. And then it takes, depending on how long the class is, it takes an hour or so to render it. Then it can take an hour or two to upload it to YouTube. So just know it has that cycle, okay? I will also be linking, because I'm starting to build a pretty good library because I've been building a tutorial library for a long time before and before COVID or anything. Um, and some things I will direct you to that are done digitally and some things I'll direct you to are done traditionally. The digital things at this point, I'm, certain things I'm looking at and going, this is just drawing, it's fine. It's just a drawing. It doesn't matter. I don't have to do it on paper. Sometimes I do have to do it on paper because the techniques require paper. Um, but if it's just a technique of drawing like this with the shapes, it's fine to do this digitally. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? So I'll link some of those. I'll probably put this one up today. Um, I forgot I had one for just sort of playing around face shapes. I don't want you to go as far as I am in the video. I don't really care about that. If you're experienced, then you can. Um, I want you to play. I'm going to give you guys a lot of room to fail in here. I want you to understand that because I think what we're going to start covering in here is fairly, depending on where you guys are at, is fairly, you know, it's pretty advanced. Like this type of inking is pretty advanced. Um, uh, if you're talking about like, Emily was just talking about Heimer Clay and stuff like that. That's that's a very loose, different kind of thing. That's, he, those look to me, I'm sure he worked them out to a certain extent, but they look very spontaneous. That's more about um, just classic hatching and things like that. So yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a lot of room to fail. Uh, like I don't want your sketchbooks don't have to be some perfect thing. Um, and you're in a learning process and I, I wear that. And this, this type of thing takes a lot of repetition and a lot of uh, technique. Okay. So what I'm big on is really showing you a lot of technique where it's like, this is how you do this. Okay. Or this is a very solid way of doing this. I'm not the type of person who goes, my way or the highway, this is how you do it. I don't like that when teachers do that stuff. It's like, no, dude, that's a way of doing it. And it might be great. That's fine. Okay. Um, you might pick up another ink thing somewhere else and go, hey, I'm going to add that to this. And, and again, you'll just cobble your own path after a while. But you need that path based on good fundamental uh, solid stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, because I'm a big believer in technique. Um, I always say the only people who argue with you otherwise are people who don't have any technique. Okay. Um, and I hear that all the time with people like, yeah, it's my style. It's like, it's not style, dude. It's crappy drawing. That's not style. Okay. You're lazy. And now you're calling that a style. It's not a style. And then they pull up people like, they pull up people like the uh, Clayton brothers and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, you're nothing like that. Like, yeah, they don't have a of style, but they know what they're doing. You know, you don't know what you're doing. Um, let me stop this share. Okay, who who was it that I had as an ad? Oh, it was me, Stephanie. Me as well. You, okay, you too, Caleb. Yes. Okay, me as well, please. Um, <laughs> here. Let me unshare this. Okay. Okay. So, Caleb, hang on. Huh? 
And by the way, when I'm demoing and things like that, I like a lot of conversation, okay? So whatever I'm doing, you don't have to wait for me to finish. Just go, hey, why, why'd you do that or whatever, okay? I like a lot of um, conversation. Okay, so. Mike. Uh oh. Say it again. What is it? Okay. Caleb. Yeah. Write this number down. It's. Oh, one second. C A L E. Go ahead. Uh, C -A hang on. C A L E V. Okay. Um, one zero zero seven six nine. One zero zero seven six nine. Yep, that's your ad code. And then where's cool. the other one? Who's the other one? Uh, me. Stephanie. Stephanie. Yes. Uh, yours is. Oops. Okay. Yours is one oh six seven seven three. Thank you. And if you have any problems with those, you guys let me know. Okay? We'll yeah. do. Yes. Okay, let me check my um I had a couple of classes last term. Um, that were really good about my illustration class last term. And there was another one, I can't think of it. Um, Saturday class were just really good. Everybody just was a lot of discussion and everybody's working really hard. It was really cool. Okay. It doesn't matter what I do. The students have to drive a class. Really? I mean, I have to give you good information. But you guys got to be engaged and, and doing it and um, be into it, okay? I can't, I, you got to do the repetition, you got to do all those things. I can show you a ton of techniques and all that kind of stuff, but I can't do repetition and I can't make you excited about it unless you get excited about it. I try to get you excited about it, but I can't get in your head. Does that make sense? <laughs> have fun with it, okay? There's room in here to have fun. I want you guys to have fun. I think your product is better if you're having fun. That doesn't mean it's not hard work, it is. And that doesn't mean that this stuff isn't like crap in your pants at one o'clock in the morning because you're us. <laughs> it happens, you know what I mean? But you know what I did? I'd go, I got extra paper. I'm starting this whole project all over again. I'm just not going to sleep tonight. I'm just going to stay up all night. And I'm going to do another one because now I'm all warmed up. I screwed that one up, but I'm warmed up. Because the thing with the trick with uh, ink, especially, we're not going to just do ink, by the way, is you put that down, man. It's bulletproof. It ain't coming up. Now, there's a product out that, hang on, you guys can hear me, right? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a product out that's called Graphic White, uh, and they and if you ever see original ink pages, you'll see where they carve something out. That you, it's like white out, basically, right? And I wish I could take you guys, I went to this show years ago, or any of these people like Crumb, or this one was Rick Griffin, who was another 60s artist. And they had his, used to do all this stuff for like Surfer Magazine and stuff. I used to love this guy. And when you see those inks in person, they're mind blowing. Like they are so perfect. It's insane looking. And like you can see them in the magazine, there's something different about seeing the actual work. You know what I mean? And you could see where he whited out like certain little things and carved things out, but they were just like beautifully perfect, okay? Um, we can't go anywhere right now, so oh well, right? Um, what else? Okay, questions, Mike. Before yeah. I go, um, on the so we're gonna do two by two. One of the photo, like what you show me, it. Do you cut out for everybody? The other one is the. I'm gonna okay. Wait till you can hear me. No. I'm going to create this thing as an assignment and I'll explain it in there. Okay. It's two pages of the head things and two pages of the object things. That's basically it. And it's 11 by 17. That's it. Okay. Also, um, can, can we ahead. color it or no? No. Uh, can we color it or no? 
No color. No, I think it's just sketches. Like, yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah. Okay. Um, if anyone was wondering, I listed the uh, illustrators and comic artists, the ones that we were talking about in the chat. Totally recommend looking up Heinrich Clay, uh, Al Hirschfield, and also yeah. Windsor McKay, but yeah, it might Windsor be McKay. a little much. No, Windsor McKay's great. Okay. I love him. He's like one of my favorites. Why is he, why would he be too much? I don't know. I think when people see his like backgrounds and stuff, people might be a little intimidated, but I really like his line work. I don't understand intimidated. I don't get that. That's because you're brave. The rest of us are weenies. Well, I mean, I just look at it and go, number one, I, I see it as inspiring. Like I look at it and go, holy crap, that's great. You know? And then I go, I mean, I, the way you guys, the me should think of it is don't look at that and get intimidated. Look at that and go, screw him. I'm going to be a hundred times better than I mean, why would I think any different? You know what I mean? Aim for the moon. Because if you aim for the moon and you undershoot it by 100 feet, you're still pretty damn good. You know what I mean? So don't get intimidated by anything. Right? <laughs> Did you guys hear me? Yeah, we heard you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we hear you. Um, so just aim high, man. Aim high and work hard. I mean, what else is there? You know, you want to be the best at something. You don't want to be second best. You don't want to be as good as you, whatever you're looking at. You don't want to be as good. I want to be as good as that guy. Screw that guy. You want to be better than me or her. Okay. <laughs> and there's, a, there's, you know, and, and it's inspiring. Okay. I always go to the Masters American Show West every year. It's a bunch of monster painters in that place. And I just come out there inspired and go, man, I just want to go paint. You know what I mean? It's fun. You know, it's fun to see that and that level of work. It's beautiful stuff, you know, and it's mind blowing, which is cool, you know. And then you guys are going to start seeing little things you probably already have where you're starting to go, ah, that's starting to look like that thing that, you know, that I love so much. I see it all the time <coughs> in my Saturday class. For some reason, at March Field on tone paper, I see piece of people's faces light up because all of a sudden they go, whoa, that's starting to look like that cool, you know viscom stuff you know and they're starting to get it and I, I don't know what it is it clicks there for some reason um then you start seeing their faces light up and seeing their work and going man that's cool you know and a lot of it is it's really cool um and hopefully i want you guys to have a lot of victories i always say that the thing that drives you forward is victories and if we're doing our job right you'll get some victories and you'll be excited does that make sense yeah yep yes sir okay you guys um I will put this up as, a, as an assignment. I will put up um, some video and the ink one I'm still working on. I just have to finish it off. I mean, it's all shot and everything, but um, those take a little longer because they're not digital, okay? The ink one's not digital. Um, and again, I leave them long because I just go, I don't like videos that are truncated and you're, you're missing information. And, and when things are complicated, I don't give a damn about time. I'd rather just take the time and because again, it's YouTube. You can just look at it in, in bite-sized chunks. You know what I mean? And one thing I do like about YouTube is when you go back, you're usually at the same spot. So that's great. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so you guys know what you're doing. I'll put it in assignments. Uh, by the way, we're gonna do two categories, <coughs> projects and exercises, okay? This is gonna be in the exercise category. You get it done, you do a decent job of it, it's 10 points. I just throw 10 points at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, when it's a project, I'm gonna be more critical on it, and that's 100 points, okay? Yeah. All right. So we just have two categories. We'll do a series of exercises, then we'll do a project based on the skill set that we just talked about, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys. Sounds Thank good. you. Thank, Thank you, you for the ad. Thank you. See you Tuesday. All right, man. Bye -bye. See you next Tuesday. Draw. I see you. Hey, um, I'll see you Thursday. Yeah. Bye. Thursday? I need to log out. That's another class. Ah. Ah.